Hi, my name is John Helfen. I'm an Education Solution Specialist with Autodesk, and today I wanted to provide an overview of the sketching environment and sketch constraints in Autodesk Inventor. Uh, the idea is I that I will generally kind of roughly follow the sketch constraints tutorial uh, in Autodesk Inventor, but extend beyond that explaining some reasons as to why you would do certain things um, and provide some tips and tricks along the way. In Autodesk Inventor, the purpose of the sketch constraints tutorial is described by saying that you will explore the impact of geometric and dimensional constraints on a simple sketch and understand sketch constraints to effectively work in Autodesk Inventor. Pretty straightforward description, um, but if you've never used Autodesk Inventor before, you may be thinking to yourself, well, why am I sketching in the first place? So that's kind of where I wanted to start out this demonstration by providing an overview of or a foundation as to why you would be sketching in the first place. So real quickly, I'm going to go ahead and start a, a new part. What's important to know is that 2D sketching is the foundation for 3D modeling and 3D parametric design. Um, in a new, when you create a new part, uh, Autodesk Inventor automatically puts you into a 2D sketch and that 2D sketch will become the base of the part you're building. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly just sketch out a rectangle and what I'm doing is actually sketching a rectangular profile or a rectangular shape and by doing that I can then move into a 3D view and use modeling features such as extrude to actually turn that into a 3D part feature. So when I go ahead and extrude that I now have turned that 2D sketch if I hover over it you can see the white line outline of the 2D sketch I've turned it into a 3D part by extruding it 3 quarters of an inch tall. So from here, as I hover over each of the uh, faces of this part, uh, you can see that they're highlighting. I can actually select one and create a second sketch. And this is the process of building 3D parts. It's sketching, it's placing features, um, it's extruding or revolving features uh, to generate more complex parts. Um, so I'm going to create one more sketch here in the upper corner. I'm going to link to the upper corner and the midpoint. And what I've done here is sketched um, one rectangle and created two profiles and you'll see here when I hit the extrude command I have one profile here which is the rectangle I drew and then I have another profile which is, which is the leftover space that was on that plane that I was sketching on so if I select that profile in the extrude command you can see that I'm starting to use those 2d shapes to build a more complex part now Instead of extrude, let me cancel out of that, I could use something like revolve to use the same 2D shape to create a very different 3D shape. So if I select that profile and revolve it around that line, I can actually say I want to revolve it 180 degrees. So there's 18 degrees. If I add another zero, I get 180 degrees. And what I've done is to use two rectangular profiles to create what is not a very rectangular part. So that at least should give you, again, this isn't a part modeling tutorial, we'll do that on a different demonstration, but this gives you an idea of why you would want to sketch in the first place. So with that, I will go ahead and delete uh, these sketches and features that we created and start from scratch to show you how to begin creating your first 3D part. With the 3D features and the 2D sketches deleted, we've stepped this part back to even before what you would get with the default file uh, because we don't have a sketch. So to start out I will talk about the origin folder that shows up in the browser. And what the origin folder is is created with every new part. It contains a set of work features that can be used to start your initial sketches. You could use it as reference geometry um, as you're building sketches um, or even other assemblies. So when I turn the visibility of those work features on um, what you'll see is the three planes, three axes, and the center point uh, up here. And I'll rotate with my 3D mouse, and you can actually see, you get an orientation of what you're looking at. Um, essentially, it's three planes that intersect at 0, 0, 0, uh, and that center point is the zero point. So what we're going to do is we'll start out by just selecting a plane and using the heads-up display to create a new sketch and that will actually rotate the view so that you're looking straight down in a planar view on that sketch. But before we actually sketch, and now that we've created this, used this plane uh, to create the sketch, I'm going to turn these off so they're not in our way. And you don't actually have to turn on 
the visibility of these to actually use them. So here let me go back to my top view now and we can start talking about how to sketch geometry and begin the process. So getting into sketching or creating a sketch enables the sketch tab in Autodesk Inventor and the tools that you need to create sketches uh, become available. So you have things to draw geometry. You've got circles, lines, arcs, splines, and whatnot. Uh, you can project geometry. You could project these planes into your sketch or the center point. Um, you can dimension things. You can add constraints to geometry. You can make patterns. So all, all the tools really that you're going to need uh, to create profiles for 3D uh, features. I'm going to start out by creating a line. And you'll notice I get a heads-up display that shows me where my cursor is, so that, uh, and that's relative to this center point. Um, you can notice when I hover over that, it turns to a green icon. It snaps to it um, because it's going to add a co coincident constraint to that center point, and you notice that it's at 0, 0, 0. So um, we know it's going to add a coincident constraint because the icon turns green, and in the heads-up display, you actually see the arrow pointing to the point. Um, that is um, the coincident that that indicates a coincident constraint will be added. So I'm going to left click and start. And as I drag, I also continue getting up heads up display information telling me how long the line is, what angle it's at. But what's important is when you hover them the the geometry into a position where the system knows it's horizontal, it's vertical, it might be perpendicular. We'll we'll see a lot of these automatic constraints being added, but when I hit that vertical point you can see an icon pop up near the cursor that shows the horizontal indicator. Uh, that means the system, if I were to left click now, will add a horizontal constraint to this line. Uh, the same happens in this case if you go vertical but with a vertical constraint. 